Hello everyone, this is Jumbo Commander speaking to you again with a new deck tech. Today we have Riku of Many Combos. So let's take a look at Riku of Two Reflections. Two blue, red, green for a legendary creature, human wizard, 2-2. Two, two. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you may pay blue, red. If you do copy that spell, you may choose new targets for the copy. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay green-blue. If you do, put a token that's a copy of that creature onto the battlefield. Riku makes copies. He reflects whatever spells you play. Creatures, you just need a green and a blue to make another one. And spells, a, a blue and a red to make another one. And so, there's a lot of ways we can go with Riku. Um, as you saw from the title screen, this one is Riku of Many Combos. So what we're going to do is point out a few combos, like, uh, get, get out of here, bio-visionary combo. Uh, we're going we're, we're gonna to point out a few combos, uh, but that's later on. The first thing we're going to do is focus on uh, the value ability of Riku of Two Reflections. We're going to start it off with Riku Friendly Ramp. Riku is very color intensive and very mana intensive. If you want to get him out and get those abilities going, you're going to have to have a lot of mana. Let's start off the mana ramp with some easy Riku spells like Secure Tribe Elder, Farhaven Elf, Solemn Simulacrum, and Wood Elves. All of these are pretty boring standard ramp, but you play them early and it gets you Riku out earlier. You play them late game and they're cheap enough that you can easily make another copy with Riku and get that value twice. Here are just a few more pieces of ramp, like Birds of Paradise, he taps for any color. Sylvan Caryatid, he taps for any color. Rattle Claw Mystic, he taps for, well, any relevant color. Next, we have a few easy-to-cast spells in the Mana Ramp category, like Farseek, get anything but a forest. Nature's Lore, get a forest. And Rampant Growth, get any basic. Next, we have Explore, one and a green. You may play an additional land this turn. Draw a card. We have Harrow, two and a green. As an additional cost to cast Harrow, sacrifice a land. Search your library for up to two basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield. Then shuffle your library. One good thing about Harrow is that you only have to sacrifice one land. So if you copy him with Riku, the total cost will be two green, red, blue, sacrifice a land, and then you get four basic land cards untapped onto the battlefield. That's a good deal. Next, we have a few standards like Cultivate and Kadama's Reach. They seem to go in a lot of green decks. Uh, you basically get to get two basic lands, one onto the battlefield tapped, and one into your hand. Let's take a look at a few value spells. Now, this is Riku of Many Combos. So we're going to need to search for some of those combo pieces, and what better way to search than to ponder for it? Well, actually, the better thing to do is to ponder and then copy the ponder so you get a bajillion cards deep into your deck. Love it. Preordain accomplishes the same thing. And if you want to get a little bit deeper, just raw card advantage, Treasure Cruise. You can delve for cheap and then copy it to draw six cards and dig through time. Uh, if you copy it, well, this will see 14 cards. Uh, love it. Now I have to give a shout out to Guided Passage. Blue, red, green, just teamer for, well, a pretty cool sorcery. You give your opponent your deck and you say, hey, pick out a creature card, a non-creature card, and a land card of your choice, and I get to draw three cards. Uh, I like this a lot, especially because it's a very cool political card. Sometimes you'll need an answer, and you give it to your opponent to find the answer in your deck. Next, we have one of my favorites. It's not that good. It's that great. Unexpected results. Two green, blue. Shuffle your library, and then reveal the top card. If it's non-land card, you can cast it without paying its mana cost. If it's a land card... You can put it on the battlefield and return unexpected results to its owner's hand. So if you hit a land, well, you ramp for free and you get unexpected results again. But sometimes you can hit something gigantic. Uh, I love this card. It's so much fun to play. 
you should include it in all of your builds that include Simic. Next we have Urban Evolution. It's Explore Divination. Div Divin Exploration. It's awesome. Draw three cards. You may play an additional land this turn. I really like doubling this one too. Now I've left out a ton of value spells because in all honesty, like every spell I'd play in EDH, I would really want to copy. Uh, I only really included the, the favorites and the things that I think really make Riku run very well. So feel free to explore the spells in your own area. Let's move on to value creatures. Oh yeah. Look at those sea worms dance value creatures. This is what Riku is all about. Doubling up those creatures so you get twice the ETB. First up in our value creatures, we have Eternal Witness. If getting something back is good, getting something back twice is even better. So, Skullwinder, a new version of Eternal Witness with a little bit of politics. And a little bit of death touch. I like this snake. Snapcaster Mange. All of these are getting stuff back from the graveyard. And in some cases, you can get two things. Snapcaster Mage is kind of neat because if you get enough mana, you snap in a snap, copy the snap, then you target the spell, then you cast the spell, then you copy that, then you copy the copy of the spell. There's a lot of stuff going on. I like these cards. Next on the value train, we have Coiling Oracle. Green blue for a 1-1 one, one Snake Elf Druid. Snake Elf Druid. It's a weird card. Uh, when Coiling Oracle enters the battlefield, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card... Put it on the battlefield. Otherwise, put that card into your hand. I like this guy. You're able to play him in early game. He ramps. Late game, well, you get to draw that card. Mold Drifter. He's a classic. Look at that elemental fish go. Four and a blue for a 2-2 flyer. And when Mold Drifter enters the battlefield, draw two cards. You can also evoke Mold Drifter. So this is a casting cost. Two and a blue. And you can have mold drifter enter the battlefield but then you have to sacrifice it but that doesn't matter because you're gonna riku this thing so it ends up being two blue green blue to get four cards and a two two flyer oh. i like i like that five mana for four cards and a two two flyer good guy next we have acidic slime this gets do you know what there's so many enter the battlefield creatures. You can just do a search, find your best ones, find your favorite ones, you know, get the ones that fit your meta. I'm not going to talk about all of the reclamation sages, the elvish visionaries, the archaeomancers, the avalanche riders, the seagate oracles. Oh, oh, I think I have to talk about the hunt master of the fells. No, no, I'm not. You can look these up. Riku has tons of value. But that's not what this deck is about. This deck is about the combos. Now, because Riku creates tokens, we can double them. Even more enter the battlefield triggers with doubling season, parallel lives, flame shadow conjuring, and second harvest. Now, flame shadow conjuring is the worst. It will go away at the end of the turn, but all of these will create yet another token. Very fun. We're here. This is the focus of the deck. We got the Biovisionary combo. Biovisionary reads one green blue for a two three. At the beginning of the end step, if you control four or more creatures named Biovisionary, you win the game. Ah, I love it. So, how do you get four or more Biovisionaries? Well, you can get one with this Biovisionary, then you can copy it with Riku and you can get a second. Well, actually, all you need is one more clone. So then if you have another clone and then you copy the clone, you have four Biovisionaries. Actually, there's a lot of ways to get Biovisionaries around, but it's a very easily disrupted combo. This is not resilient. Uh, that's why this is the challenging combo that we're going to go for. And actually, I want to take a quick break and talk about combos in general. So I want to pause for a minute in the middle of this deck tech to talk a little bit about combos in EDH. Now I'll go into a lot more detail in a different video, maybe talking about my opinions and combos. But I think that this deck is the right deck for you to explore combos because, well, it has the spectrum of combos. 
The Biovisionary combo is not a very powerful combo. You need four copies of Biovisionary on the battlefield. You need to jump through a lot of ho hoops to win the game. And when you do, you win it in spectacular fashion. People usually aren't upset by the Biovisionary combo. Where people really start getting upset is, well, two card combos. Where someone wins out of nowhere, when people have I win cards in their decks. Uh, it can rankle little people that, well, you didn't have to try, you just had to well, cast a card. I cast a bunch of cards this game. See, this is where Riku of many combos is such a good deck. There's so many combos in here that you can kind of scale your deck based on your playgroup, based on your opponents. If you're playing against someone super hyper competitive, go for one of the faster, easier, more spiky combos in this deck. If you're playing against someone that well, might take offense at a very efficient combo, then you need to challenge yourself and go for the Biovisionary. This deck can be exactly the type of deck you want in every single situation. All you need is a little bit of discipline not to quickly combo off as fast as possible. All right, back to Biovisionary. We gotta get four of them on the battlefield. So let's start with some of our clones. Altered Ego, X2, Green Blue. Uh, and basically the important part is that he can't be countered. And so Altered Ego can't be countered and he gets plus one plus one counters for X in case you wanna spend all this mana and make your Biovisionary gigantic. It can't be countered, it can't be countered. Uh, the next one I like is Clever Impersonator. It can be another Biovisionary, or it can copy anything on the battlefield. Well, non-land permanent. I like copying opposing Planeswalkers. I like copying cool mana rocks. Clever Impersonator is a great card. Dax Duplicate. Uh, this guy has Haste and Dethrone. For all the times that you want to send your Biovisionary in at the person with the most life as quick as possible. That's, that's never, by the way. You want to protect your Biovisionary. Gigantoplasm! Uh, he costs four mana, and I'm sorry, I get distracted when I look at the picture of Gigantoplasm. You just have to have him in your deck, just for the art. Uh, but anyways, you can pay X and give him base power toughness XX. So again, you can have a gigantic Biovisionary. Phantasmal Image. This, is, this one is actually a little bit serious. Uh, this is so cheap of a clone that it's really, really worth it. So Biovisionary Bio costs three. If you Rico it, that's two more. So that's five total. Then you Phantasmal Image for two and then Riku that. That's two more. So that's nine mana total for Biovisionary, Phantasmal Image, Riku, three card combo, win the game with nine mana. That's also very mana intensive. I, it's... <laughs> I, I like it. Phantasmal Image is very good. Next we have Phyrexian Metamorph. Uh, he's also cheap. Only three to cast Phyrexian Metamorph, plus a Phyrexian Blue, and you can copy artifacts, too. Progenitor Mimic. Progenitor Mimic is very fun, because you can play Progenitor Mimic on Biovisionary and just say, go, and then they have to deal with him just, like, spitting out new Biovisionaries. I love it. Sakashima Student. I think that this clone is better with a lot of your ETB value creatures that you have in this deck because this allows you to ninjutsu it into play. So if you ninjutsu the student, you can return the cool ETB creature that you have and then make a copy of something great on the board. And it's just a plus that it also copies Biovisionary. I actually think that this is the secret mode of this deck. Just cloning your opponent's awesome creatures can win you the game. Uh, this might feel like a lot of clones, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight clones, and then there's more on the next page. Wow, there might be too many clones. I, I lied. You could never have too many clones. So let's talk about more clones. Stolen identity. Six mana clone. Well, it's not so good, but put a token on the battlefield that's a copy of target, artifact, or creature. Cypher. So when the creature you cipher this onto hits an opponent, you can cast the spell again for free, and cast is the important part, because you can Riku both the Stolen Identity and the Cast for Free trigger. Oh, so cool, and can put tons of creatures on the board. This can also just value out your opponents if you put Stolen Identity and start copying their crazy creatures all over the place. Plus, the Artist Suite. Rite of Replication. This could just be you win the game. Either... 
you win the game by copying their broken creature, or you win the game by copying Biovisionary and make five extra Biovisionaries. That's like two more than you need. That's winning plus the Rubbins. It does cost nine mana, though, to do that. Next, Tempt with Reflections. So this is four mana for a clone, and then you can go around the table and... Well, your opponents can decide if they want a clone too, and if they do, you get another one. This doesn't really work with Biovisionary very well. <laughs> you like, okay, I'm going to copy Biovisionary. Do you want a copy of it? You mean a 2-3? That... No, I don't. <laughs> so it doesn't work very well with Biovisionary, but it does work really well with all of those ETB value creatures that we talked about earlier. And that is really fun to do, to get like a ramping creature or an artifact destruction creature and just go around and try and tempt everyone with those Enter the Battlefield abilities. Cackling Counterpart. One blue blue. Put a token on the battlefield that's a target. Copy of target creature you control and it has flashbacks. You can do this twice. Now, all of these put tokens onto the battlefield, which means they work really well with Doubling Season and Parallel Lives that we mentioned before. So we have one last combo with Biovisionary, and that's Infinite Reflection. Five and a blue, Enchant Creature. When Infinite Reflection enters the battlefield, attached to a creature, each other non-token creature you control becomes a copy of that creature. Non-token creatures you control under the battlefield is a copy of Enchanted Creature. So if you attach Infinite Reflection to Biovisionary, well, that Moldrifter that you played early on, well, it becomes a Biovisionary along with that random Sylvan Caryatid that helped you ramp and that other Snapcaster Mage that got you value and suddenly you've won the game. All right, we've left the Biovisionary comboed behind. Now we're going for the much more powerful combo. That's the twin combos. Made famous in modern, we have Kikijiki Mirror Breaker and Splinter Twin. And when these are combined with cards like Pestromite, Deceiver Exarch, Bounding Crisis, or Zealous Conscripts, well, you just win the game. Uh, the way it works is that Kikijiki and Splinter Twin will tap to put a token onto the battlefield, and all of these cards on the right hand side uh, do something special, which is untap which lets you repeat kiki g gear splinter twins ability over and over again so make a new token that new token untaps uh the original token creator and then you do that over and over and over again to make infinite amount of awesome pester mites or exarchs or whatever and win the game so how do we facilitate this very easy two card combo well we look for it with cards like imperial recruiter two in a red for a one one when Imperial Recruiter comes into play, search your library for a creature card with power no greater than two. Two little sword, by the way, that's an important thing. Uh, reveal that card and put it into your hand. Shuffle your library afterwards. So this is a weird card because it's power no greater than two. So you can get things like Kikijiki Mirror Breaker or Pestermite or Deceiver Exarch. So this gets a whole bunch of your deck. Uh, now, disclaimer, Imperial Recruiter is very expensive because its print run was awful uh, and I wouldn't blame you for not putting it in your deck. Next we have Woodland Bell Bellower and it's for green green for 6-5. When he enters the battlefield you may search your library for a non-legendary green creature card with converted mana cost 3 or less and put it on the battlefield then shuffle your library. Notice that this is kind of a fixed version. It says converted mana cost 3 or less not anything with the power or anything like that. So what Woodland Bellower gets is it can get this Bounding Crisis there because it is a non-legendary green creature. Or we can just tooth and nail and just get the combo whenever we want. Now these cards will also search up a Biovisionary. Or they'll search up a Biovisionary. Or they'll search up a Biovisionary and a clone. Infinite Mana Combo. Now in Riku decks, you kind of feel obligated to include an infinite mana combo because it goes so nicely with its general. Palancron costs seven mana for a four or five flyer and when he enters the battlefield, you can untap up to seven lands. For four mana, you can return Palancron to its owner's hand. Now with Riku constantly copying Palancron, well, 
you can basically put a palancron into onto the battlefield for two mana a green and a blue that's a copy but you still get the untapped seven lands trigger so you can bounce and replay and bounce and replay and bounce and replay and basically get infinite mana if you have Riku and Palancron. You'll also get infinite mana with a card like Phantasmal Image and Palancron because Phantasmal Image only costs two. He'll enter the battlefield and gain all the ETB effects that the Palancron has, which says untap up to seven lands, and you can still pay four and return it to your, to your hand. So if you add it all up, Say you pay two for Phantasmal Edge, untap seven lands, pay four to return it to your hand. That means you've paid six, but untapped up to seven lands, netting you one mana. Both Riku and Phantasmal Edge will net you infinite mana. Now what do you do with it? Well, you can start off by sinking all that mana into Altered Ego. You can make an infinitely large Palancron or an infinitely large Biovisionary or whatever silly creature you want and attack next turn. Or you can take that Gigantoplasm that you had before and make an infinite, infinite creature and attack with that. Or you can just win the game with a card like Helix Pinnacle. One green for a shrouded enchantment that says X, put X tower counters on Helix Pinnacle and at the beginning of your upkeep, if there are 100 or more tower counters on Helix Pinnacle, you win the game. Next, you could just Stroke of Genius. You can genius someone out. Now. What you should probably do is, using the infinite mana, Stroke of Genius yourself to draw your whole deck, and then Helix Pinnacle for the win, or do Kiki Jiki, or some other combo for the win. But Stroke of Genius, other people to mill them, is also very classy. And if you want to just win, you can Comet Storm. Uh, Comet Storm will be able to not only kill every opponent, but kill every creature on the board, which is good for style points. Protection. Your combos are a little bit delicate, so you might need some protection for your creatures. Let's take a look at a few of them, like Spellskite. Two mana for a zero four. Uh, for a Phyrexian Blue, you can change the target of Speller ability to Spellskite. It's a modern all-star. It's pretty good in this deck, jumping in front of the silver bullet designed for your Biovisionary. Next, we have Asceticism. Three green green. Creatures you control can't be the target of spells or abilities your opponents control. So it gives them hex proof, and then for one and a green, you can regenerate your creatures. It's very similar to Yavamaya Hollow, which can pay green and tap and regenerate target creature. So if something bad is happening and they're trying to disrupt your combo, well, you can always regenerate and start over again, or throw the spell skite in front of it. So some reflections on Riku. Riku of two reflections. Um, this deck is very interesting. It's a little bit weird because it has two distinct parts to it. It has the value creatures that you need to make Riku cool, and you have a bunch of combos thrown in that, you know, really do match with what Riku's trying to do as well. Overall, I think this is a very fun deck because of the different combos and the different ways that you can combo out. But you kind of have to want to play this deck in different ways. If you're constantly kiki jiki pestermiting, then you're not going to have a lot of fun because you need to explore the other options in the deck. Uh, try winning one time with cloning your opponent's creatures. Try a Helix Pinnacle. Try a Comet Storm. Try the Bio Visionary and fail and try it three more times and fail and then finally get it. My point is this deck is as good as the person piloting it. So I invite you to be a badass, take this list, and go out and win games. All right, I hope you enjoyed this deck tech of Riku of many combos. This is Jumbo Commander. I would really like to thank you for listening to me and watching this video. Please like and favorite and subscribe and combo and share and comment and win. And thanks, just thanks.